How powerful is Cox Fiber? Powerful enough to keep fans across the country in the action on the biggest game days of the year. Whether you're one of 65,000 fans at Allegiant Stadium or you're streaming the game at home with Cox Fiber from the company with America's fastest download speeds, whenever it matters most, Cox keeps you connected. Limited availability in select areas. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla of Speed Test Intelligence Data. Fixed median download speeds US Q3 2023. Kevin Saul is our guest, Wichita State's athletic director, making his monthly appearance on the show. Hello, Kevin. Hey, good afternoon. How are you guys? Oh, we're well. I'm waiting. Uh, Jeff disappeared on me, so we're waiting for him to get back here into the into the studio. So I got to conduct this interview on my own here for a minute. Uh, so the Shockers. Oh, I hope uh, I didn't run in... them off. <laughs> Uh, you're you're an astute guy. You pay attention to everything that's going on. I'm sure uh, you're probably even drawn somewhat to social media. Uh, is social media a good thing when you've got a team that's scuffling a little bit and fans are free to voice opinions and you kind of get it from all directions? Uh, how what what's your feeling about that? Well, I think it's uh, we could probably talk for a, a few segments on this. I think social media. Um, can be a really, really useful tool for communications and promotions and all those sort of things. I think, um, Bob, anytime you set up a dynamic where there's uh, um, unrestricted uh, dialogue, that um, there's very little accountability to or for. Um, certainly, I think the the uh, the amount of um, not credibility or relevance, but the the amount that that lets you, that you allow that to impact you, you got to be careful with. Uh, I think that's easier to say as a 46 year old than it is as an 18 to 22 year old, uh, because certainly our youngsters, uh, young young people, young men and women have not lived in a world that that doesn't have social media. So it's easy for me to say, hey, I don't dive into comments uh, on social media. Just look at general posts and those sort of things, but. Um, that's a lot of the ways our young people communicate uh, nowadays, whether it's you know, all the different aspects of social media. So, again, I think it's a mixed answer for you and probably a little bit more complex. Um, at the end of the day, uh, there's a whole lot more uh, relevant um, and more constructive ways to focus your time in in terms of getting better as a student, a person, or a player than spending time on social media. So, you know, you hear uh, a lot of times when a, when a coach is in his first year and, and maybe the momentum uh, positively hasn't sustained itself that, you know, be patient, wait a year or two, we'll let him get his guys in. Is that your attitude too? Is your attitude one of patience? And if so, what is patience to you? I, I, I doubt you set a time frame on it, but what, is, what does patience look, look like to you uh, when, after you've made a hire? Yeah, I think I appreciate that that question. I think patience is somewhat of a, a a vague term because unless you're in it day to day and you see the uh, progress and details and timelines and all those things, um, just to just to, for for somebody to come out and say, "Hey, stay patient." I think you really got to educate people on process and what's going on in terms of you know locker room dynamics, culture, attitude, learning different styles of play. Um, really tough competitive schedules, all of those things. I think w if I can be uh, transparent, maybe even a little vulnerable uh, with you all, you spend a lot of time around all of our programs, obviously our basketball programs as well. And, and there's a certain level of confidence that comes with the things that you see day in and day out. Film sessions, video review, attention to detail, uh, style of play, how we're developing young men and women as students, persons, players, ultimately professionals, all of those things that you can see day in and day out, and a lot of them are not visible externally. One example that is visible externally is you guys may have seen that we set another semester record uh, GPA as a full athletics department, and as a part of that, we had three programs that uh, set their program record highest semester GPA in the history of their program, men's basketball, baseball, and softball. And so if you think about that from a baseball perspective, holy smokes, we have 30 new guys on this roster. And so for Gretchen Torline and her staff, her unbelievable team, and Brian Green and his staff, and more importantly, our student athletes, 
to embrace how we do academics here at Wichita State and perform the best that it's ever been done here before, that's a really positive sign. That's one example of an outward-facing sign of success. But there are literally dozens of internal signs that we are headed in the right direction that, um, you know, I think the general public might have a tendency to roll their eyes about. But at the end of the day, they can't see it. We got to do a good job of communicating what's going on inside the program, ultimately understanding that our fans and supporters are going to be looking at wins and losses. And there is infrastructure that needs to be put in place. And there certainly is a period of time. But I think at, at times folks will use the word patience and might connect words um, like a lack of urgency with patients. And that's certainly not the case at all. You can be patient, but be very urgent uh, towards uh, day-to-day incremental, responsible, methodical improvements. And that's where I feel like our programs are. Talking now with Wichita State Athletic Director Kevin Saul. So you hired Paul Mills, the Shockers men's basketball coach. Tell us why and tell fans why uh, you believe he's the right guy to get this thing turned around because Uh, It has been a little bit of a rocky stretch of late. As I talked about uh, with my first question, uh, fans take notice. Shocker fans want winners. Uh, Why do you believe Paul Mills? And and just take us behind the scenes a little bit into his personality and his drive and his focus. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I don't think 16 games into this thing, and I don't think any of the reasons that we communicated in, in March why we hired Paul Mills have changed. Um, and so certainly I'm happy to walk through all those pieces as well. This is an individual that – Well, is, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, you know, in hindsight, Kevin, I'd rather you talk just about his personality and, and what you believe in about him. Yep. Well, first and foremost, I believe in his character and his integrity, um, the, the way he uh, navigates his walk as a professional, uh, personally, all of those things. Um, he's about the right things in terms of development and relationships with the young men in our program, um, all of those pieces. Um, if you look at it strictly from a basketball perspective, uh, this is an individual that, that was hired on as an assistant coach. Um, at Baylor in the mid to late 2000s. Um, You guys remember the situation at Baylor. Um, uh, It was a really dysfunctional situation, and and Scott Drew gets hired and brings in a staff. They won one game their first season at Baylor, and that program has transitioned into multiple Final Four national championship-type program, and that takes some time. I think, in fact, it took 14 years, 15 years, to go from winning one game in a season Uh, to a national championship. And so the fact that Paul has been through those trials um, obviously is very encouraging. He also not only did it once in one of the toughest leagues in the country, he did it twice uh, at Oral Roberts. And and I've watched the Oral Roberts program for the better part of 15, 16 years now, having been a part of what used to be the old um, Mid-Continent Conference and then Summit League. Um, they dominated that with Scott Sutton. Oral Roberts was a really good program uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s, and, and it really fell on hard times, and it, was, uh, it, it slid fast. Um, and so for Paul and his staff to come in in a handful of years, get that program into two NCAA tournaments um, and a, uh, uh, beating Florida and Ohio State to get to the Sweet 16, and then having a two-point loss to Arkansas to get to the Elite Eight, that's saying something at Oral Roberts. And I think you heard Coach Self mention that uh, after our game against Kansas. Um, there, there is great confidence in Paul Mills, not only from his director of athletics, but from people all over basketball. Um, he's about the right things. He does it the right way. His process is phenomenal. Um, you know, he, he's a teacher, um, and it does take time to be good. Um, he has a healthy confidence uh, in terms of, of where we're headed and what this program will be about. Um, and he works every day uh, to make us better. So um, really, really pleased with um, obviously the infrastructure pieces. Nobody's going to look at eight, eight, eight and eight, including Paul Mills and Kevin Saul, and say we're pleased with that or our players or anybody associated with the program. Also understand you start eight and three. Um, you've got five consecutive losses, Kansas State, Kansas, North Texas, 
um, uh, Temple and, and Memphis. Memphis uh, recently ranked 13th in the country. North Texas is going to finish the top three in our league. Kansas is second team in the country, and Kansas State's um, success has been well documented last year and is likely headed towards an NCAA tournament this year. So um, it's not like we're playing, um, you know, the 300 pluses in the net either uh, on our schedule. We won't shy away from a tough schedule. So again, I, I, all of those factors guys is, is it's stormy right now. The waters are choppy and the most important thing that we can do is stay steady, uh, stay re- committed to our process in terms of what we know works uh, Paul has been a part of two programs and building two uh, dominant programs. I've had experience supporting coaches that have built programs, and so we'll continue to stick to what we know works best. And just appreciate uh, what patience folks can provide uh, as we navigate that process. Kevin, where does Wichita State stand right now from an NIL standpoint? Uh, you know, we know armchair strategies with Timberly and, and Tyler Weber. Is that duo still active what is what are they particularly doing do you communicate with them and is there another group potentially what is the nil situation and how much of a priority is it uh, at this moment jeff as you know when when i arrived in july of 22 there was zero dollars uh, attributable to nil uh, there was a very strong resistance to uh, adaptation to nil and so I think I've shared with you guys, we spent the better part of six months not only putting the infrastructure together in terms of our agreement with Open Doors uh, that opens up the a window to our student athletes by the business community. It certainly has paid dividends over the last uh, 16 months, but also educating our fan base. And I think that's where we fell the furthest behind in being resistant to NIL, NIL at Wichita State was we could have jumped on a year earlier the education of our fan base. And so we didn't, we didn't get to the first NIL gift until January 6th of 2023. And I started July 5th of 22. Um, and since then, we have built uh, – Armchair will be the experts, but I think they're distributing somewhere around three hundred and twenty-five dollars to $350,000 a year strictly for men's basketball. So that's certainly good growth, um, and that certainly has been very helpful. Um, look, we're not supposed to say it, but at the end of the day, we all understand that there are recruiting and retention impacts to NIL. The NCAA just had their national convention. Um, there, there will be future legislation likely in April. Uh, potentially in August, I think you will see NIL become even closer and closer to athletic departments. It will fall underneath the athletic department's umbrella and our multimedia rights, our shocker sports properties, our fundraising and development teams are going to become integrated with NIL. We need to do a good job with that. As we all know, um, we can have the nicest facilities in the country. Um, We can have some of the best coaches in the country. At the end of the day, we also need to be able to recruit to retain and to develop talent. Um, and so that piece is really important. So short, in short, Jeff, I would say we've made some good progress. Um, you know, Kansas State's dealing with about $1.2 million in NIL. Um, and so certainly we're, we're likely not going to be at that power five level from an NIL perspective, but I do firmly believe we can do more with less um, at Wichita State. I think we have coaches in place that value relationships with players. Let me give you an example. Paul Mills um, um, walked through two recruiting cycles with Max Abmus, who's now the starting point guard at, at Texas, um, at Oral Roberts on very little NIL. So relationships matter. Development matters. Having the right coaches in place that, that the players have confidence that they're developing and becoming better, um, that piece matters. So, again, it's not all about an arms race on NIL, but we do need to have enough there to be competitive um, to recruit, retain, and develop. Final moments here with Kevin Saul, Wichita State Athletic Director. I don't know, did you see the video of Gino Ariyama um, talking about all this? Did you happen to see that? I saw a snippet of it, Bob, but I, I would need a little bit of a refresher because I didn't catch the full context of the video. Well, he's just saying that he doesn't know that uh, these changes in college athletics are sustainable, especially for older veteran coaches who don't have – maybe the success he has, or I, I, I watched it once and, and I, I want to go back and watch it again, but let's say Gino Ariyama came into your office and you were talking about this, uh, the new age of college athletics. 
what would you tell him to convince him that this can be a good thing down the road? Well, at the end of the day, the, the, to me, the, the, the most valuable um, components of intercollegiate athletics hasn't changed, uh, i.e., uh, we're 50% first-generation college students at Wichita State. Okay, We're providing an opportunity for young people that have never done what they're doing. There's, nobody in their family has done what they're doing. They're doing it for the first time. Um, so they don't have that necessarily that support network. And they come to Wichita State, and they get ingrained and integrated into an academic system and an athletic system. And they get to compete, develop student, person, player, professionally. And we're, we're getting young people to the, to the spot where they're earning their degrees. And when you take a first-generation college student that earns a degree and then might go get an advanced degree, well, you're ushering generational and transformational change in families. And that still has to be a part of the deal. There is value in a college education. And uh, despite what, what you might hear uh, in the national narrative, it, 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 from a hiring perspective, uh, from an experience perspective, there's value in it. Uh, there are multiple uh, research studies out there that show that in combination of uh, compensation, health benefits, incentives, raises, that a college education provides a, a little over a million dollars more earning potential to a young person over a 40-year career than not. And there are certainly cases where that's not the case, but in general, that is the case. And so um, that value hasn't gone anywhere. Um, the ability to work with young people and connect with young people hasn't gone anywhere. So we need to fight like heck to keep the educational piece connected to what we're doing. Um, because I think that will change. If it doesn't, that changes the perspective of a lot of folks. Now, the, the, the financial piece is a little bit more complex, and you'll have to break me off if we, if we run up against a break here, because there are exorbitant amounts of money that are generated off of intercollegiate athletics. What seems to be lost in the national narrative is that there really are only one or two true revenue-producing sports on every college campus, and that sport supports. You may have seen recently an interview with uh, retired Alabama football coach Nick Saban where football supports 18 to 20 other sports, 450 to 500 student-athletes at that institution who, by the way, are still benefiting from everything that we just walked through, the 50% first generation um, uh, receiving a college degree and all those pieces. Um, and so there's an exorbitant amount of money that's involved in one or two of our sports. We've got to re make really smart decisions in terms of what that looks like so that we don't disconnect that educational piece. So I would tell Gino, I would tell our fans, I would tell, I should say, Coach Oriema, any of our coaches that look the, the – intrinsic values in in being involved in intercollegiate athletics the intrinsic values and benefits that are associated with participation and persistence in, in intercollegiate athletics from a student athlete standpoint are tremendous i experienced it so i understand the confidence and the time management and the self-reliance and all those pieces that come with uh, being a student athlete um, and so those are the things that i think we need to sell I think our fans struggle with the mobility of the transfer portal and the financial pieces, and I certainly understand the why, because what once was a great beauty of athletics was watching a young person coming into your program and then them develop over three to five years uh, to become something really, really special. And so um, those stories will be fewer than they have been in the past. But at the end of the day, it's the same 18 to 22-year-old young person that's trying to develop and get better as a student, a person, player, and professional. And if you focus on those things and take care of all the other stuff that allows us to pour into young people and develop them, um, that's really where our focus needs to be. Kevin, great answer. Thank you. We appreciate your appearance, uh, as always, and we'll talk with you soon. Sounds great. Thanks so much for having us on the show, guys. Appreciate your support and coverage, and go Shockers. How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to keep fans across the country in the action on the biggest game days of the year. Whether you're one of 65,000 fans at Allegiant Stadium or you're streaming the game at home with America's fastest download speeds powered by fiber, Whenever it matters most, Cox keeps you connected. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla of speed test intelligence data. Fixed median download speeds. USQ3 2023.